Hey gang, welcome back for another episode here on JoeChem. All right, in this episode, I wanna talk about reduction and specifically reducing a functional group that we've worked with before, but I wanna talk about reducing nitriles because strangely enough, well maybe not strangely, but if you choose two different types of you know uh, reagents to do your reducing, if you use a less aggressive one versus a more aggressive one, we get two different types of products. So in this video, I wanna talk about what happens in each of those scenarios. So when you're reducing nitriles, you can use a less aggressive reducing, uh, yeah, reducing agent such as Dibol. You can use Dibol or you can use our favorite friend, lithium aluminum hydride. First, I wanna talk about what happens when you use Dibol and how you get aldehydes, and then we'll worry about LAH uh, later in the video. So before we even get started, Dibol, diisobutyl aluminum uh, hydride. That's what it stands for. It's a, it's a mouthful, which is why people abbreviate it. We're gonna need to draw the structure out, so I just wanted to put it handily on the side. But you can see there's an isobutyl group. There's two of them. That's where the diisobutyl comes from. And we obviously see the aluminum hydride. So the name makes sense. Is it hard to remember and pronounce? Of course, it's OKEB, right? So when we have this very simple uh, nitrile, if we do a first step of dibol and then a second step of acidic workup with water, we actually just turn our nitrile into an aldehyde. And it is a little strange, right? I drew two carbons and then I drew the C because in the nitrile, I wanted to just draw CN, but you can see it kind of transformed into bond line versus actually explicitly drawing the carbon. So let's go ahead and do the mechanism. So to start off, weirdly enough, we will need to actually draw this out. So I'm gonna actually show the bonds here because we're gonna need to manipulate these. Aluminum. Oh, I missed the bond. Gotta go down first. There we go. Okay, so this aluminum only has three bonds, right? So it is perfect to accept an electron pair. So our very first step that we're going to do is the nitrogen is going to attack right there. Draw over here. Oh, nope, that's not a lone pair anymore. Bond to aluminum. H. And aluminum got an extra pair, so aluminum has a negative charge because aluminum is in the third column of the periodic table. And if we do a little formal charge, whoops, computation, we can see one, two, three, four, aluminum has a negative charge. Okay, so what's gonna happen next is the actual reduction. So this hydrogen is actually going to come with its two electrons and move way over here, right? So that's how this is going to, this is the reduction part. And we're gonna break the octet rule at that carbon, so we have to do something. And that something is to give nitrogen electrons. And actually, I'm gonna lie, it's not to give nitrogen electrons, it's to actually move these up here as a double bond. Oh, I even lied again. That something is to give this nitrogen alone pair. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Here we go. Carbon, double bond, nitrogen, lone pair, bond to aluminum, and aluminum still has the two isobutyl groups off of it. That all checks out. Oh, and this has that right there. Okay, so I drew this. It looks funky. Let me redraw it one more time. Oops, let me draw it a little bit differently. So I have my one, two carbons. I'm gonna draw this third carbon like this. And I'm gonna draw this as IBU, isobutyl, and there's two of them. We actually produced an imine in this step, okay? And that was the end of number one. Strangely enough, heading into two, we have this imine and we have H2O and H+. So I hope you're leaning back on your carbonyl knowledge and think to yourself, ah, all we're gonna do is unravel this, this puppy straight to the aldehyde. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this here. I'm gonna redraw it in the next step. 
So, not, there, this is actually nothing new. I can even stop right here, but why not? We're having fun. So, in this next step, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna uh, to protonate the, so now we are in a acidic environment. I'm gonna move this down here. Protonate my nitrogen. Now I'm gonna redraw this to be, because even I'm a little confused. And I am going to abbreviate this as IBU with a two. That right there. So now I've protonated the nitrogen, kind of made it a better leaving group per se. But now I'm gonna bring in my water because I need to reintroduce oxygen to this structure somehow. I have my nitrogen over here, my aluminum, the IBU, the two isobutyls right there. And now I have this new oxygen with a positive formal charge. Remember, and, and this is just the hydrogen over here. We're not drawing it. So now we get to do the proton shuffle, right? I want to protonate this because I want to make this a better leaving group so I can get rid of it. And I want this to stay for a good and long time. So I'm going to deprotonate this. So I'm going to use water. And I'm going to use hydronium here. Didn't give myself great layout here. Sorry, gang. but just the proton shuffle step. So if I redraw this, I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna redraw this just a little tightly up here. Okay, so I have two carbons. I have a nitrogen, the aluminum, the two IBUs, and an H and a plus charge, primed for leaving. And I just have an OH up here. So what I can do, I can form my carbonyl, make a double bond. At the same time, that's gonna help me eject this at nitrogen. This isn't quite how this actually goes. We're gonna do this a couple times. However, for all intents and purposes, this is what we do. I'm just drawing this in this time. And we're just gonna have water, we we'll pause positive charge here. Water's gonna help us do a cleanup. What I just want to drive home with this mechanism, because again, this is a good complete reaction question. It's even helpful in synthesis, right? If you ever have a nitrile on the end and you want to get to a carbonyl, you can just throw in some dibol and then some acidic workup. But the point being, we did a reduction, but the reduction helped us get to a point where we got and we generated an imine. And because we had this imine intermediate, that's why we, we immediately follow the dibol step up with acidic workup, because that's going to help us um, eliminate whatever we have on the, you know, the imine character and restore a carbonyl. And that carbonyl happens to be an aldehyde. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this. I wanna do the mechanism for when you use a more aggressive re uh, reducing agent, source of a hydride, uh, and how that produces amines. We can do some complete the reaction questions and we'll call it a video. Okay, gang. So now that we've seen this scenario play out when we take a nitrile, treat it with something like Dibol, a mild reducing agent, nothing super aggressive, we take a nitrile and we produce an aldehyde. What I want to look at now is what happens when we take the same nitrile, oh, in this case, the same nitrile, but use something a little bit with a little more oomph, a little more uh, aggressiveness. And instead of using Dibol, we're going to use our friend LAH, lithium aluminum hydride. I've definitely said this in past videos, but the abbreviation for LAH, or lithium aluminum hydride is LAH. That's a global abbreviation. It's nothing you know I made up. Just if you see LAH, think lithium aluminum hydride, okay? So same starting material, same nitrile. We're just gonna use lithium aluminum hydride. We're gonna have the same acidic workup. And instead of a carbonyl, namely an aldehyde, we're going to get a, uh, an amine instead. And I wanted to just, you know, asterisk this carbon and show you it before and after because we're going from, you know, explicitly drawing it to putting it in the, like, in a zigzag bond line. Okay. Just as a warning, this mechanism is a little bit more complex than what I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw what I've seen, not just in the textbook I'm using,
but or like I reference, but also from many, many, many online sources, I've seen this mechanism. There is a more complicated one that I could very well draw out. If you're watching this video and you need to learn it and you're struggling with the more complex one, leave a comment below. I'm more than happy to you know make a new video, like a, an extra video with that mechanism, but uh, I'm not gonna do that right now. So here we go. So to start off, what we're going to do is I'm going to draw the triple bond exposed in the, in the nitrile. And we're going to have lithium aluminum hydride, which looks like this. The Al4 has a minus charge because aluminum has four bonds. And the aluminum, or sorry, the lithium rather, counteracts it as a spectator. Well, counteracts it with its plus charge. The very first step here is going to be that one of the this is basically our source of H minus hydride, right? So hydrogen and these two electrons are going to come and find the very positive, partial positive carbon, right? Because that carbon is triple bonded to nitrogen. So at the same time, you can draw this differently, but what's very popular to do is when this attack happens, we're going to break the octet rule. So nitrogen is going to take one of the double bonds here to both electrons and then bond to lithium, or sorry, ugh, aluminum. So basically we're making some connections here. This hydrogen is completely leaving and attaching to the carbon and we are basically making a nitrogen aluminum bond. So how this plays out is we have the carbon. I'm going to asterisk this carbon, or sorry, this hydrogen. So that hydrogen is going to be here now. And now we have this still a double bond to nitrogen, but now we have a nitrogen aluminum bond. Aluminum still has four bonds total, so we have a negative, and the lithium is just going to float and hang out, balancing out that charge, right? Because we started neutral, we're going to end neutral. Okay, so you can see we have no double bonds in our product. So while we did a reduction there, we went from a double bond, triple bond, to a double bond, we have to do this tango one more time. So same type of flow, sort of, but we're going to have another hydride, another H minus. Hydrogen's going, hydrogen will take these two electrons, this hydride will come and reduce the carbon. And this time, instead of nitrogen taking these electrons and bonding to something, that nitrogen is just going to receive these electrons. So now I'm just going to, this carbon, I'm just going to kind of include in the chain. There's two hydrogens, there's the nitrogen, and there's the aluminum with just two hydrogens. And actually, aluminum is no longer negative. It's actually, right, we didn't use that lone pair here. We still had it. Now we have a nitrogen that actually is a negative charge, and the lithium is kind of floating near that now, okay? So here's the complex part. When you do the, when you do the H plus, H2O, even how, what I did up to this point, it's not... The full story, but I'm going to say this is complex. This is where if you're watching and you're saying, well, my professor or my teacher wants me to learn a different mechanism, uh, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to do a different video with the full story. So it's at this point where this complex structure right here, once you have the acidic workup, you actually just get to your wonderful amine product. So I would say this. I don't really see, I like the dye ball mechanism more as, as far as like knowing the mechanism because it involves earlier OCHEM2 chemistry, right? You formed an imine and you unraveled it, right? So you learned something new, but dependent on something old in your recent memory, right? So I think that's a very important mechanism to know. Well, I say important relative to this mechanism, but I think you absolutely can leverage both reactions and synthesis and you'll absolutely need to be aware of them for complete the reaction questions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this gibberish and we'll do a couple of complete the reaction questions and then call it a video. Okay gang, so let's just rock these two examples and call it quits. Okay, so in the first example, I think uh, you'll find it very straightforward, right? We see we have a nitrile and we see we're doing a first step of dye ball and then a second step of acidic workup. Piece of cake, right? So all we're gonna do is we know that 
This reduction ends up going through an imine intermediate. That imine intermediate then gets hit with the acidic workup, which unravels it back to a carbonyl. So we are on a, you know, obviously nitriles are terminal. So basically I'm going to have my pentagon, my five ring structure. I know I have two carbons off the ring and it's this carbon right here that's going to become the aldehyde. Bingo, bango, bongo. There is my aldehyde. Okay, and just a quick note, it's called a reduction, right? Like you might think like, oh, we're, we, we're introducing oxygen. But if you actually calculate the oxidative state of this carbon, right, we have a triple bond to something more negative without getting into oxidation numbers. We are triple bonded to something uh, more electronegative than itself, speaking as the carbon, but here we are dub only double bonded to something more electronegative than itself. So it, it is reduced in that way, okay? Now the second example is a little bit trickier in my opinion. So we don't see any nitrile off the bat, right? But I hope what you're seeing is this. We start with one, two, three, four, five carbons, a five carbon chain with a chlorine on the end, an alkyl halide. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons and an NH2. So we went from five carbons to six, and we also have an amine at the end. So I think why I like this example is because the chain grew by one and we have an amine. So here's what I was thinking. We need our chain to kind of grow. We need to introduce a sixth carbon. We have a very good leaving group and a primary carbon. So if we threw in NaCN, sodium nitrile, nitride rather, sorry, um, CN minus is a superb nucleophile, right? And that, or negative, this is a very good SN2 reaction. So the first intermediate we generate, one, two, three, four, five, is this right here. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Great, we got our six carbons, bam. At that point, that's when you can do your reduction. And in this case, right, maybe we would have to decide, do we need Dibol or LAH, right? Do we need less aggressive or more aggressive? Because we're going to the amine, we need LAH. Lithium, aluminum hydride, with a follow-up step of workup and water. So we lengthened our chain by one and then reduced it down from a nitrile, or and we did that with a nitrile by doing SN2, sodium cyanide. Sorry if I said the wrong thing before, sodium cyanide. Uh, then we reduced the newly introduced nitrile with lithium aluminum hydride and work up. And that is how we got to our final product. Okay, gang, so like I said, I think the takeaways here are that the dibol mechanism goes through an imine intermediate, right? Imine with an I, intermediate that flips to the carbonyl and that relies on your knowledge of carbonyls, right? With acetals, imines, enamines, that vibe. But it is, and not that I don't think the mechanism for reducing a nitrile with LAH is important, it's just more complex. And I just haven't, in my experience, seen the full blown mechanism asked for. So if you know the abbreviated version and how to predict the product, I think you're fine.